Hi, this is Dave Tree of All The Cool Stuff in Fording Bridge and today we're going to be taking you back in time, roughly about four years ago, to watch one of four toy reviews that we did, but for one reason or another we never actually got round to editing and putting it out there. So uh, some of the information that might be contained in there isn't necessarily relevant where we say it's new in stocks, so don't like rush out and go crazy, but the reviews are quite good to watch nonetheless because for a couple of reasons, number one, the figures were amazing, these are all Star Wars reviews and they were quite excellent figures for the time and they've not been surpassed in four years since. And secondly, um, within some of the reviews, you actually get to see some pretty cool things and insights that you don't normally get to see in other toy reviews. So, uh, whilst it's a bit different from the stuff that we're now doing currently, sit back and enjoy these. And like I said, there's one or four, so check them all out. This time round, we are going to look at the new Star Wars comic packs, number 17 which is one of the last sort of four on the legacy run, which is looking at uh, Spock, is it? It, it kind of looks like Spock. Uh, no, it's Baron Suntirfel and Yizane Izard. I might have got that wrong. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but uh, these guys were based on the Rogue Squadron comic book series, which is packed in with here. Um... It was one of my favourite comic book series from like the uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, very, 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 very cool. Uh, and it was great to, you could kind of relate to it because it wasn't actually like looking at all of the hero characters. It was kind of like the sort of the day-to-day the, the -day sort of grunt and all these other things rather than the limelight being taken with like Han, Luke and Leia and what have you. Anyway, let's have a look at some of these guys now this this is quite interesting because this guy has actually been released before in another comic pack and he was very interesting because he was a mountain of a man he was so huge he kind of looked a little too weird uh, and completely out of place with all other Star Wars characters um, now the previous incarnation he was uh, Oh, that was a bit of a weird one. He's kind of like half TIE fighter pilot, half not. Um, but he had this, this kind of cool removable armour. But, oh my god, look at me. He's, he's like kind of Frankenstein coming to get you. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a, a real missed opportunity last time. Um, because he was just so huge. I mean... Check out the guys next to... Whoa! That's so huge he knocked over the camera there. Um, but check out the guy he's next to. I mean, he's got he's got his helmet on. And this this was, you know, although this is a dated figure now and he's... You know, but for, for around about 2003, 2004, this, this, this guy rocked. But he was just huge and he had this kind of all this other weird sort of armoury stuff, which I'm sure wasn't in the comic book but you did have like the stripes because he was the head of the 181 tie interceptor squadron which was like the the elite uh squadron uh it was like the imperial equivalent of rogue squadron but you know you had and if i could do it well anyway you had a removable tie fighter pilot helmet and um like chess piece which was really possibly the coolest thing about this because I up to this point when this guy came out I don't think they'd actually done <coughs> something like this before um you had the optional sort of breastplate bit but if we look at the new figure he is back into regular scale and unlike this he's in a normal imperial officer's outfit um, now the big surprise with this compared to all of the marketing shots it was just like this guy with no hat and if you look in the pack he's got a hat and oh, what's this this looks very very cool now they, these weren't in any of the marketing shots, 
which instantly makes this interest uh, figure infinitely more interesting. Um, it's got the little removable cap, which I'm pretty sure has been issued with other figures, although it's really squidgy plastic, which the ones I've seen before are, are quite sort of hard plastic. Um, the legs are based on the Death Star uh, Trooper, um, which kind of all gives them, it, you know, it's kind of cool, but it, it just makes them all look a little bit weird when they're standing up. I mean, look at that. Um, looking at the arm, where he's got his like pinstripes from before, uh, it's it's a tricky one because they can't get the stripe on the you know I I realise that's just really really difficult to do, but why why use this arm mechanism right Why not choose a different arm that might work um, because you've got half the stripes missing. Um, it's a bit of a weird one, um, but look at that! This for me is what makes it all worthwhile. Um, I love all my rebel pilots, and let's just try that on there. Uh, yeah, Spock becomes an X-wing pilot. Um, it's kind of weird that they included this, but in his Imperial f uh, officer's outfit. Um, I'm pretty sure. If I remember back to the comics, I'm pretty sure he used to fly with his Imperial. TIE fighter pilot's outfit on with a helmet or something like that, I think I could be completely wrong and there's people out there infinitely better qualified to answer that than not myself um, but uh, yeah, you've got uh, you've got his well, you've got a very cool rebel black helmet here uh, but not his orange flight suit maybe, you know it's too orangey for crows um, it's odd I don't know why they included it, but for me, it actually makes the figure um, because this is a standard mold that you can use with any other Rebel pilot. So you can actually troop build and have them outside of the ones that you've already got a zillion times over. It's the variety that makes it interesting and quite nice. Um, point of interest: Do these bits are they interchangeable? I haven't tried so. <laughs> Will it fit? Look at the size of it. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Oh, it does. But kind of makes him even freakier. Uh, let's try this way. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. That's actually... I would have said this would be a better choice than the helmet. Uh, in terms of keeping the figure going, but but this is much better. This this is cool. This is cool. So, Baron Fell, um, part Imperial, part Rebel, um, part Vulcan. Um, but um, yeah, it's quite cool. Maybe you can pop the head off and change it with uh, another head to make another Imperial officer. You know, th this is a figure. That now has opportunities, uh, whereas this guy really didn't. Um, but just loving that. Now, if we look at the other, the other companion piece for this review, um, Izard, Eddie Izard, or Yzane Izard, um, an interesting character um, vying for um, uh, greatness within the Empire and the power struggle that uh, following Palpatine's death uh, she was the head of the Imperial Intelligence Network um, and I don't know if this is going to pick up but she had one blue eye one red eye all rogue hair um, it was kind of interesting um, this was at a period of time in sort of Star Wars where it's kind of getting back into the limelight. This is before like the special editions and uh, the prequels and pretty much every comic and every uh, book novel came out all had to have, it was a staple at the time, a strong female character. Uh, you had Mara Jade, you had Winter, you had Callista, you had Admiral Dala and you had Izzard. Um, 
she is done decked out as she was in the comic books so uh in like red imperial gear this is probably uh again i've not got one to compare it with but this is probably just a recolor of uh a previous figure that's been done either the dina shan one or the um the uh juno eclipse from um uh force unleashed um but it's kind of cool um i'm not entirely sold on the whole hair thing i know it's part of what how she looks but it's a little bit too contrasting um she's kind of got these uh rather snazzy driving gloves on as well look at that um and packed with the standard imperial blaster which um for someone of this rank and what have you she probably wouldn't have anything like that she'd probably have something a little bit fancier um but um is a good companion piece with Fel because uh, he didn't really like her because um, he knew that she was basically playing him for chumps and sending him off to his death um, because he eventually ended up joining the rebels uh, and uh, interesting quirky fact he was married to Wedge Antilles' sister um, so it's like the top of the Imperial Aces and the top of the Rebel Aces and, but linked by love um but uh yeah no she's cool she's all right um but uh again perhaps maybe this is a, a figure of opportunity that you can mix and match with other things uh to make uh, a lot of other sort of fodder the other thing that comes with this is as with all comic packs a reprint in this case reprint of rogue squadron uh and it's pretty much minus the occasional little advert. Oh, look, there she is, Izard, as something, Izard, as something else. But you can see better her uh, her crazy blue and red eyes. And there's uh, Baron Fell. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's pretty much. And then they have all the ads in the back, as always. And what other things are coming out. Um... This is one of four comic packs that we've now got in stock. Um, these won't be hitting uh, general retail at all. They were a wholesale exclusive through Entertainment Earth in the United States. Uh, we've got them in. You've also got a few others, including um, uh, Del Delilah or Della Blue and Darth Nile. Um, and Jarrell and Rohlandari. Um, I probably completely mispronounced all of those. I just do not know anything about them. Um, but um, in one of four comic packs, this is Baron Suntifel and Yizane Izard. Um, we've got them uh, available in the store or online for eighteen ninety nine. Um, because of their scarcity, they probably won't last long, so by all means, please do drop us an email at sales at all the cool stuff, or check the website. I'm going to do this, but I doubt if it'll work, because maybe we can get the website to like pop up. But, um, yeah, or give us a bell in the shop, 01425 650696. Uh, this is Dave, but the other Dave... Uh, <clears throat> doing the second Star Wars review for all the cool stuff and watch this space for lots more so to hear to <laughs> soon still loving the helmet oh just too good <laughs> It's all my little pony.